这场我们很容易邀请到这个日本政府这个 MITI， 这个 MITI 是呃日本政府的 Ministry of Econo Economy Trade and Industry， 这是一个呃日本政府有点像这个介于呃科技部加上这个经济部这些部会的一个科技的相关的部会。那这里面的这个 o k r a s a n 是担任这个治安方面的专门的部门。那今天的议程呢是会介绍日本政府使用这个 Cyber Physical Security Framework 这个 CPSF 的这个这些 framework 来导入这个日本的治安的政策，在政府方面的推动。那我们非常荣幸，这个邀请到这个 o k r a s a n 来 h i k a 为我们分享日本的这个状况。Okay, so um, um, this is uh, this is Judy from Hikang, and uh, we are very glad to invite uh, Okuya-san from uh, Japan's uh, Ministry of uh, MITI, that is uh, Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry, and um, he will be um, he's the director of Policy Planning and the Coordination Division, and um, he will be uh, introducing us how to use uh, many policy frameworks in the in, to promote cybersecurity in Japan. The, anyway, so the, I will, the, I would like to, I would, like, I would like to share our view about the importance of the collective activities for cybersecurity issue and the, what kind of effort we are doing in Japan. The, by my speech, but you can see the, my talk point from my slides. Maybe after this presentation, the, you will be able to. Upload my slide to your homepage. Yes, yes. We will try to uh, project all your slide as soon as possible. And uh, uh, mm -hmm. please start your talk. And sorry okay. for that. And uh, one, one more thing. Um, um, if you have questions, we have a web link called Slido. Slido is a Q and A website. Mm -hmm. And the link is on the uh, is on the agenda page. And uh, after the talk, uh, we will use Slido to do the Q and A session after this talk. Okay, so, great, great, great. 如果有任何问题发问，请用那个议程页面上有一个叫 Slido， 在 h i k a 网站的议程页面上有一个 Slido 连接，在那边打上 Q and A 问题。所以让我们用这个热烈掌声欢迎这个 o k a s a n 的演讲。So let's welcome o k a s a n I'll do a presentation as soon as possible. Okay. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank again. you. So the, thank you for giving. Uh, uh, thank you for you, you giving a great opportunity for me to share the, our view about the recent cybersecurity issue and what kind of effort we are doing in Japan. And especially, I would like to emphasize on the importance of the collective, co uh, collaborative activities for cybersecurity, because. The, as you know, the cyber attack is becoming more and more sophisticated and smart, smarter and smarter. So the attackers try to find uh, vulnerability in the weakest point in supply chain. So in Japan, and uh, I think the, in Taiwan also, the many big companies have already introduced a very high level cyber security measures. And uh, they, can, they have already introduced a SOC system and a special team for cybersecurity inside the company. Th they, do, they have already made a big effort to manage, the, to protect themselves from sophisticated cyber attacks. But actually, the attackers are trying to find an entrance point to the big company. That's a small, medium, size companies, SMEs. In Japan, we had a very interesting survey in 2018. Osaka Chamber of Commerce, Regional Chamber of Commerce, conducted a very interesting survey to SMEs. Osaka Chamber of Commerce made a partnership with University of Kobe to give special monitoring services for 30 SMEs during three months in 2018. All 30 SMEs received serious cyber attacks. And five from 30 companies 
received a serious damage and became became the attacking point to partner the big companies. That's a reality. And uh, after the survey, Osaka Chamber of Commerce wanted to know what kind of reality they are facing, especially the end, big enterprises are facing, were facing. And uh, they gave this, uh, they tried to receive the anchor from 100 big companies in Kansai area. And one fourth, 25% of the companies received a serious damage from, by the attack from part to, uh, from SMEs who are partner of big enterprises. It's me. From that survey, from these surveys, we have already seen SMEs has already become the attacking point to big enterprises for cyber criminal players. That's a reality. So because of that, individual activity for cyber security is not enough to protect our supply chains, our society. That's the first point we should start talking about cyber security. That's our understanding. We have already had a various kind of the frameworks or guidelines for cyber security. For example, ISO 27001 to NIST cyber security framework by US NIST. All these kind of uh, the framework and the guidelines for cyber security are good for especially individual entity. But this framework and guidelines will not work well for promote promotion of collaborative activities. So far, we have only cybersecurity tools for individual entity. Because of that, METI, my organization, and my division decided to introduce a new type framework for cybersecurity to promote collaborative activities. That's the cyber physical security framework. CPSF. We spent over uh, one and a half year to introduce the CPSF. We conducted two times public comment, not only in Japanese, but also in English. And uh, we released the version 1.0, CPSF 1.10, in April 2019. We received thousands of comments not only from Japan, but also outside Japan, like the United States and the European, um, European Union. Especially many American companies like Microsoft and the CISC, those companies give a very, very helpful comment on, draft, on the draft of CPSF. We reflected all these kind of positive comment on CPSF. Because of that, CPSF has already become the, one of the major global framework for cybersecurity, especially for promotion of collaborative activities. And the CPSF has already, uh, ha has already been used by many big companies in Japan and also to become the base to introduce uh, specific sectoral guidelines for cybersecurity, for example, the automobile, building, like that. In building area, there are various kinds of stakeholders, architect, developer, system integrator, vendors, all these kind of stakeholders need to share the same principle for cybersecurity, for building. Unfortunately, we didn't have such a kind of the 
building targeted guidelines for cybersecurity in the world. Because of that, we decided to introduce cyber physical security guidelines for buildings for all stakeholders based on CPSF. We released building cyber physical security guideline in June 2019. Many, not only Japanese companies, but also the European companies and the Australian companies referred cyber, building cyber physical security guideline. You can, you can have the building cyber physical security guideline in English. You can, you can find. And also automobile industry introduced their own cyber physical security framework for automotive industries to protect their long supply chain. Automotive Industrial Association released the supply chain cyber physical security guidelines for automotive 2020. You can find the automotive specific guidelines in English as well. So that all these kind of secular activities we are promoting now, and the smart home area also introduced the cyber physical security guidelines for smart home, smart house. Oh, sorry for that. So far, we have only in Japanese version. And the space industry just started to talk to how to make their specific cyber physical security guidelines based on CPSF for space related industries. So all these kind of activities, uh, all industries has, have just started in each sector to introduce a such a kind of sector specific guidelines based on CPSF. And based on CPSF, we also introduce an IoT security framework in 2020. That's the IoT, IoT security safety framework we named IoT SSF, covered the all IoT area, how to set the, the security measures for each IoT products. We gave the conceptual framework how to think the risk and the measures for IoT. And we will release, we will release a data management framework based on CPSF maybe in the first of next year. We have already finished the public comment, not only in Japanese, but also in English, for the draft of data management framework. You can see the draft of data management framework. We would like to use data management framework as a major than the reference to build a true data-free flow with trust structure based on data management framework. All these kind of activities we are doing now. And also, these two are helping Japanese industries to strengthen their capability for cybersecurity. But we also, to promote actual activity for industries, first point, we talk with Japan, many, many Japanese business associations to let them make some kind of partnership by, them there, by themselves. And eventually, Japanese major three business associations took leadership to launch Supply Chain Cyber Security Consortium, we named SC3, in, last, in November 2020. Over 90 major business associations, like automotive business associations, the power utility business associations, steel business associations, and the electronic industry uh, business association, and the banking groups, 
all these kind of major business associations join to Supply Chain Cyber Security Consortium, SC3, to share same understanding about cyber security and to share what kind of effort they should do and what kind of partnership should they should build. Now, they are focusing on the three major topics. First, to support SME cybersecurity. Second, to make, uh, to strengthen the partnership between academia and industry for cybersecurity. And to promote the cybersecurity effort, not only in urban area, but also regional area. And also, they are trying to share what kind of the cyber incident happened and what kind of measures will work well for companies. Through Supply Chain Cybersecurity Consortium, industries are sharing the best practices and to strengthen the partnership between enterprises. Even we are making this kind of effort, frankly speaking, it's not enough because we need to protect SMEs. That's a big, big challenge, frankly speaking. And uh, I frequently talk with American friends and European friends and the Israeli friends how to protect SMEs. Because to protect our supply chain, we need to strengthen the capability of, for cybersecurity on SMEs. But on the other hand, as you know, SMEs capacity and capability are so limited. It's not enough to add the special capability for cybersecurity for SMEs. That's a big, big challenge because of that. Four years ago, I started talking with insurance company. I asked the insurance company to prepare the special insurance, cybersecurity insurance for SMEs. At that time, four years ago, insurance companies mentioned to me they wanted, but they didn't have enough data to architect, to design the appropriate cybersecurity insurance for SMEs. What kind of coverage they, that insurance should have? Premium, how much? All these kind of data they, did, they didn't have at that time. Because of that, in Japan, we launched national project to make cybersecurity insurance for SMEs during two years. We succeeded in gathering very good data and good knowledge for insurance companies. Insurance company made a partnership with security vendors and the regional chamber of commerce to make appropriate marketing to SMEs users. And from this April, these insurance company groups succeeded in starting commercial services. They start selling cyber security insurance for SMEs. We named cyber security savers. That activities are so cutting edge activities, frankly speaking. But we, anyway, we succeeded in starting. American friends, European friends, Australian friends, and especially Israeli friends showed a strong interest, especially the insurance services, because Israeli government also has the same idea how to use the insurance company to involve the cybersecurity activities. They also had a similar kind of concept, but they have not yet succeeded in involving insurance companies. Because of that, I shared my experience with Israeli friend. We are very glad to share our experience with our friends. And uh, also, I, I, would like to the, I would like to point out the importance of 
industrial control security things as well to protect the critical infrastructure. Not only information system security, but also industrial control system security is very critical. It's very, very critical. Frankly speaking, specialists for industrial control system securities are so limited, not only in Japan, but also all over the world, even in the United States, even in the Israel. The specialists for industrial control system security are so limited because in Japan, we launched a special center of excellence. We named Industrial Cyber Security Center of Excellence, ICSCOE, from 2017. In ICSCOE, we give a special one-year training course to specialists or a candidate for specialists for industrial control system security. One-year training is very, very workable. It's very effective. After the, the end of training, the trainee would become, would become actually hacker level specialist. And uh, we are making such a kind of effort to expand the, the, the number of the industrial control system security specialists in Japan. And also, we would like to share this kind of the capability and asset with other countries, friends. We started special industrial control system exercise for ASEAN countries, Taiwan, South Korea, Australia, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, New Zealand from 2018 with American friends. And this year, officially, European Union, Union joined to the special industrial control system security exercise. We had one week special joint exercise in the last week of October your colleague in Taiwan also joined to that special industrial control system security exercise we are very glad to share our experience and our asset and also we would like to learn we, were, we would like to be learned more and more about cybersecurity from specialists all over the world. Still, our effort is not, is a very premature level, frankly speaking. Cyber attack is becoming more and more sophisticated and more aggressive. We need to make more effort to protect our supply chain, our society with your special capability. Thank you very much. And I would like to receive your comment or your question. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Okuya-san. Okuya and uh, um, um, let me um, apologize again for the technical problem. So we could not locate the, the presentation slide. And uh, uh, please, uh, could you please like share to um, as again, maybe from email, we, we can post on the website uh, today. So, um, thank you very much. And um, 再次抱歉，就是因为一些技术的问题，我们没有找到这个投影投影片。那呃，我们会在这个会后再把这一份这个呃 now, so this is time for Q&A now, and um, do you have any questions you want to ask? I didn't see any questions on the slide, so do you have any questions on the slide? If you have any questions, you can raise your hand or press the button on the slide. We have 10 minutes left.
Okay, so um, I have a question myself. So um, I, I would like to know, so this is a kind of framework developed by uh, your team, right? So how, how to like, um, how to develop such a framework in how, how many um, like, like efforts uh, and what is the challenge of uh, developing su such framework? Thank you very much. Mm. That's a very interesting question. Actually, the CPSF is a very huge structure. And uh, I recommend you all to actually lead CPSF itself. You will be able to find CPSF in English, in website. And uh, actually, to make a basic concept, my team, uh, my team uh, in I give the basic concept to my team. The, in CPSF, there are three layers to articulate the risk point in cyber physical integrated society. Three layer and six element for supply chain. That's a basic concept. I give that concept. And my team member, three member, give some kind of component. But on the other hand, it's not enough. We also need to study other countries' standards, framework, guidelines, over the world. And because of that, we, gave a, we made a partnership with one company to make a draft of CPSA. The first draft around 30 or 40 pages like that. Then I gave this we gave the draft of the CPSA to our study group. We gather the major industries and academia people, around 20 people. Then we receive, then we circulate the draft of the first draft of the CPSA in the study group, and we receive the comment, and then we improve the draft of the CPSA. That's the second draft. Then. We give, we conducted a public comment on second draft of CPSF, not only in Japanese, but also in English. And uh, fortunately, we have very close relationship with especially American friends, because I, I was stationed in the United States. There are a lot of friends we I have in not only governmental side, but also industry side. And uh, we shared the, the second draft of the CPSF to American friends first way. And the uh, governmental people gave a comment, and also many major Jap uh, companies like Microsoft, Cisco, they gave a big help, support for us. In the case of Microsoft, they circulate the second draft of CPSF, not only in the engineer in the United States, but also all over the world, the work for Microsoft. <laughs> They, they gave a very sophisticated comment for us through the public comment. Of course, the European friends also gave the, uh, the, their view, especially German friends have a very good sense about, especially IoT area, manufacturing IoT area. Their comment also so uh, helpful, uh, uh, so meaningful, so that we reflected all those kind of comments on the third draft of CPS. And the third draft of CPS became over 100 pages. And also, we give correspondent table between CPSF and ISO 27012, CPSF and NIST cybersecurity framework, CPSF and SP80171, all these kind of major standards we covered in CPSF. You can see the correspondent table with all these major standards. The, we made uh, this kind of thing so that many people d during this process, frankly speaking, over the thousands of engineers actually involved into these activities through public comment. Because we conducted a two times public comment and the major companies circulated the draft of the CPSF to 
all engineers, not only in Japan, but also outside Japan, and in the case of the United States, not only the engineer in the United States, but also the other area, Japan, the Asia, and Europe. The, we succeeded in collecting all these kind of diverse, diverse view on CPSL. Because of that, we spent over one and a half years, a relatively long time we used, but we succeeded in making a very good framework, I think so. Yeah, the communication is very key. Deep correct communication, mutual understanding, and frequent talk, all these kind of things help to make a sophisticated framework. Not only inside Japan, but also outside Japan. Thank you. Thank you very much for telling us the story behind the uh, yeah. creation. This is a very a special, valuable uh, experience. Yeah. And um, um, yeah, let me. Um, so uh, we we are very glad today that we can hear not only uh, how a framework could be used, promoted, but how it can be created, and it must be uh, uh, many round of draft and uh, involving many stakeholders. Okay, so do we have any other questions around uh, um, this session? Okay, no? And as I can see, there's um, no uh, other question from the online Slido uh, system. And so um, let me uh, thank you again, uh, Okuya-san, for bringing this great talk to us. So we are in an age we need many uh, guidance or framework on the cybersecurity because cybersecurity is so complicated and uh, we are glad to hear uh, a new framework we maybe can adapt to the, the daily use. Uh, we will try to uh, promote in Taiwan also. And thank you again. Let's uh, thank you. Uh, use our hand to applause again to, to thank, thank the speaker, Okuya-san. Thank you. The, I would like I would like to give the last comment. Yes, we please. need to the, we need to promote collaborative activities for sophisticated cybersecurity, not only inside own country, but also over the boundary. Cross boundary collaborative activities is a very key to protect ourselves. We are very glad to make a deep partnership with you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we, we will try to promote the collaboration. Okay, thank you again.